Hello and good day to you. Today's video will be crocheting a ruler lace caftan to fit size 8 to size 14 or 16. That's an adult size. This we've already made um for the doll for dolls before. That's because when working on a series, Crafters TV series. And in that um, book series, an animated series, an uh, animated book and game series, we have a um, knitwear section what we're working on. So we have to design some knitwear. So we designed this for the dolls, the caftan. I was like, okay, why don't we make this for adults too? Because I really like the pattern that we can make for an adult. So we decided to use it to, to make an adult for an adult. This pattern will be available on the blog for free and we have this video demonstration too for the for we have the video demonstration for people to watch too for free. So it's going to be on Anina TV and Crafts TV where you we have our games, our audio uh, audio books and video books and many more demonstrations there and our upcoming talk show. And in upcoming talk show and interviews, crafters interviews and many more. So what we've already designed the uh, captain. Although it's knitted widthwise, like so, but when we make the dress is going to we're going to rotate it so that it's lengthwise. So you when you're making it the width will be longer, but when you want to wear it, it's going to be like a scarf tan. And you can make it make it short, you can make it long. Short, you can make it short and then wear leggings or jeans under it. Or you can make it long so that it's gown-like as it is for this dolly. So to knit this roller lace caftan, which we decided to use for an adult, I know you've seen it on dolls, and some of you that follow the blog, you know that we are using it, uh, as I stated, that we're using it to illustrate Crafters TV book series, bedtime stories and games, and um, also the animated series. We're using it for that, and you are seeing it. But we just decided to make fun adult, because I, as I said earlier, I really like the pattern and I want to use it this autumn. So to make it, we need um, our swatch. So here is my little swatch that I designed for it. Little swatch. Uh, we need a tape measure. The tape measure, you have to take your measurement, spread your arm sideways and then sideways like so as the doll is standing and you measure from one elbow to the other elbow but if you want it longer you can see how it is okay um, but if you want it to the wrist they measure from one end of the wrist to the other end of the wrist that's from your left wrist to the right wrist if you want it to cover your wrist okay so that's just how it's going to be I'm just going to put it later so that's how it's going to be Make it longer, you can make it shorter, but remember you can still reduce the size if you want to and you can make it half so that you can just put trousers under or pants. Uh, trousers, trousers, let me say trousers. <laughs> let me use the word trousers instead. Okay, you can use leggings under it. So to knit, after the sizes with your tape measure, you need a ruler. Please, I know I'm demonstrating using the metal ruler. That's because I can't see my wooden ruler and plastic ruler. Um, please don't use metal ruler. It can cut you. I have to be very careful, make sure no one sits around me when I'm using this. And also, because it's metal, it's, um, apart from it cutting, you can cut someone that sits close to you and it's kind of, um, although it won't break, but it's kind of dangerous using metal ruler. So get a wooden ruler or plastic ruler and be careful with that. Don't worry, it won't break if you are very careful. But you'll be able to, you don't want knife, you don't want cuts 
on you because you're knitting or you're crocheting. So please, I know I'm demonstrating, I'm using metal ruler that's because I can't find mine. Uh, I don't know where I kept it. I don't know where I kept it. So I have to look for it. But please, please, please don't use a metal ruler, please. Okay. So you need, um, it's going to be of um, 24 inches. Yes, 24 inches. That's 60 centimeters. You will need crochet hook. It's going to be either um, crochet hook 4.5 centimeters or you can use um, 3 centimeters. If you want um, for size 8, you can use 3 centimeters. You can still use the same um, numbers of stitches, but you can use 3 centimeters or 4 centimeters for size 8 to 10. Then for 12 to 14, you can use this sort of size. Or if you want it smaller, you want your stitch, or you're using a, something like a DK yarn, double knitting yarn, you need you want to use a smaller needle. It all depends on the weight of the yarn. This is iron, and a uh, larger needle is alright because the stitches are kind of big. Okay, and the uh, wool, um, the thread, the wool is kind of uh, thick. Okay, so I'll. Uh, and for the yarn, you need three 400 grams each of iron yarn. So that's what I'm using. But I'm using different colors now. For that's, um, this is 400 grams. This is 400. This is 400, 400, 400. You only need three, that's 1,200 grams. You only need 1,200 grams of yarn. That's three, 400 grams, three, 400 grams each of iron yarn. Why I'm using different colors is because when I was, I had only two, two, that's 800 grams of iron yarn, just called. And I was planning to make it just plain back and front same color. But after knitting the back, this is the back. After knitting the back, I'm left with about, um, should I say, 300 grams of yarn. Uh, let me just say 300 grams of yarn. Oh, I'm left with 300 grams of yarn. That's not going to be enough because I've already used um, 500 for the back or 500 or so for the back. So I decided because I I didn't see any odd um anywhere to buy the yarn. They get just on offer, you know, Audi. They just bring them and that's it. If you don't get them, you have to look for people that can sell them to you. So I have different colors. I decided, okay, why not make stripes for the front? Combine the other colors, we we'll make stripes for the front. Combine the other colors, we'll make stripes for the front. Why we make leave the back to be solid color when we need another kaftan or something else maybe i'll have enough yarn for other ones but it's a nice way to combine to make use of what you have i'm just trying not to make sure i do a lot of ordering okay so i'll put this one aside This is a swatch, and um, for the swatch, okay, before I talk about the swatch, let me just show you. So we need on the side, we need like so, that's a pattern. I think we'll go closer so that we can get it. Okay. We'll make a um, chain, then DC, we make the loops, and then we secure the loops with, um, Another DC double crochet stitch. Sorry, sorry for the abbreviation. Sorry for the abbreviation. I will make double crochet DC or double crochet uh, crochet. So stitches. So that's what we use. And we start with the uh, chain stitch. Next is going to be a double crochet. Then the loops and double crochet to secure the loops to make them the lacy effect. And then we end with double crochet after securing the loops. 
So you have to, apart from measuring your shoulders to sh um, elbow to elbow, you also need to measure from your shoulder down to your ankle. That's for the length you want it to be. Then you will need to rotate. Um, okay. This is how you need. But when you are designing, you need to, if it's the caftan, you may need to rotate. You can still put it like so and this, uh, make it like so if you want it to be like that. Or if you want it vertically, you have to rotate uh, 90 degrees. Okay. So let's start. I'm just going to put the white so that you see it clearly. Also, the white in case uh, the color have. Um, okay. So here it is. Don't. Um, it's been layered because it was stitched together for the door. So here is uh, the pattern we're going to make. But this time when we wear it, when we finish, it's going to be like so. Then we'll put a large belt and look chic. Okay. I'm going to start with C D C green. So because the let me just put the pattern first and there's something I want to talk about first. So when we start with the C green, what I'm going to do is because we are going to use different colors or going to alternate the colors, I'll make sure each line. It's um, a different color entirely. Roller lace is made up of multiples of five, five stitches plus one. The one is the turning chain. Roller lace effect is a loopy lace effect created by making loops over a ruler and then securing the loops with double crochet or single crochet stitches made into the loops. So these are the loops made into made on the ruler and these are the double crochet we're using securing those loops to make the design. Why the so ruler lace is made up of five stitches, multiples of sorry, multiples of five stitches plus one is because one is a turning chain. But if you see it here, you see that we have for this four uh lace effect we have five loops here five 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 that's 20. so we are going to create the effect we have five loops here five 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 that's 20. then one easy turning chain our garment requires us to use 191 stitches Sorry, 190 stitches plus one, which is a turning chain, is going to be 191 stitches. So we have to cast on 191 chain to start with. But I'm not going to start casting that now. I'll have to do a little demonstration so that we can progress. We can, from that, we can now move on to our gamut. I'm now going to demonstrate how to make the stripe pattern for the ruler lace. So I'm going to make 21 chain with the T or C green. So we have 21 here. 21 chain from the second chain from sorry from the second chain we make the first chain and into the second chain we are going to do a double crochet so going to just do that in here And into each chain space across, we're going to do double crochet.
so here we have it okay because it's dry you see that I've, I've, I did this yes it's a mistake here because it is dry I'm not supposed to do this loop out I'm going to remove that loop and let the two hang so before I do the last loop because it's stripe, that's the, uh, re the, the difference between stripe. Because it's stripe, I'm going to cut my yarn. Just going to trim it off at an angle there. And I'll get the next yarn. Then I'll tie it. If you notice, we still have two loops. I'm going to tie it so close to the yarn. Let me tuck this one off the way so that it's not um, intruding or causing a distraction. Okay, so I'm going to tie it. <laughs> it's a kind of struggle because I'm demonstrating. Um, okay. okay, I'm going to, let me see if I can. Okay. And I'll put it twice in the loop I made so that it creates a firm a knot. It's firm knot. And if you see it's so close to, I'm going to bring it closer so that you see, you see it's so close. So when I take the, when I do the last loop to secure these two extra loops, so when I do it, okay, I don't know if you saw that it's distracting, I know. So I'm going to just. It's um, tight. It's very tight. You can see that it's very tight. And so I'm going to take this loop away. And when I do the last loop to secure it, you will see that the new color comes up. So this row, we have the new color. And I'll just put the yarn in, uh, the ruler in, turn my work. Sorry, I think I'm making a lot of mistake now. When it, uh, so I turn my work and we have the loop there. So turn, I'll turn my work. So here we have it and when we pull it, we have our loop. For every, when you're making the stripe for the next row, that's the technique. So you, that's the stripe of the previous row don't the color of the previous row don't enter the next row so i'm going to turn my work don't mind that this so strand i'm going to done them just going to hide them behind so that i show you this okay so pick my loop i'm going to turn my work and then put my ruler in to this first loop Then put in the crochet hook into the upper part of the second DC, the top of the second DC. I'm going to pull a loop and then wear it on the And if you look at the front and the back, we have the loop there. So we're continuing that process into the third one, the upper part of the third, pull a loop and we'll be it on trying to <laughs> you know when you're sitting and crocheting it's easier because you have a um, place to rest your hand place the ruler okay i'm just going to let it slide like so Into the upper part, pull a loop, 
and we are it so far the ruler if you pick if you pull the loop from the upper part if you pull the loop if you use the upper part of this um, double crochet of the previous row to take the loop from your loop will be consistent but if you come in between to take the loop that if you take a loop from in between the two stitches your stitches will be consistent and you want it to be the quant the number of um, loops you desire to make the pattern And when we count, we we'll have twenty. We should have twenty loops. And we have the last our last double crochet there I'm just going to count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen something eighteen nineteen twenty so we have twenty loops on the ruler the next step we'll turn our work we'll cut iron you know this is just a little demonstration because our pattern calls for 190 stitches to make the design but remember the one the extra one so we had to make 191 we had to make 191 um chain to start our pattern for the gown if you are going to make the same caftan that i made this the pattern is going to be on the blog and you can use that so the next i'm going to tie this as usual before we start the next row tie it twice into the loop Then we'll turn our work. So you have strand on the left and on the right side of your work if you are doing stripe. So for this one, you take the yarn, the sorry, the crochet hook, you count since we have on um, 20 because of roller lace you can do it in form of six the loop in six you can do it in depend on what design you want you can do it in three six five four you can do the loop in that format so i'm going to put the, the crochet hook we'll count it in five because we have 20 20 we have 20 loops so i'm going to put it in then I'll wind the yarn around the hook of the needle and just pull so that I have a loop to work with. Then I'll wind the yarn again around and secure that loop.
then we need to do um, five double crochet because we have five loops so it corresponds with the number of loops you have if you have five loops, you have to do five double crochet so that your pattern we have the same uh, we be straight and the stitches will be the same so I'm going to do five double crochet into the loop remember it's not on this side yet but when we remove the ruler it's going to be in the middle so it secures both loops uh, sorry it secures the up it secures the loop so i'm going to count so i've done three there's a fourth one This is the fifth one. Then I'll pull it out so that you see. As I said earlier in the video, one thing you have to take note of is the direction you are going to. You don't want to be crocheting and it's facing this side because if it faces the side, it's going your um it's going to twist the pattern and you don't want that so it's going to be like so remember if you are knitting towards the right it should be on the right it depends on how you are knitting it oh sorry how you are crocheting it for the next we just wind the yarn around and i'm going to pick five loops again and if you saw that I wind, wind the yarn, you wind the yarn around the hook of the, the crochet hook and then slip it under, wind around again and pull so that you start the double crochet. You don't need to make it, oh sorry I just dropped. <laughs> you don't need to make a chain for that because the chain is going to make your work widen. So since I've done that I can pull it out and walk but be careful when you pull it out because sometimes this loop slips because the ruler is resting and uh, I'm not in a comfortable position while doing this that's why I'm able to pull it out and do that because I don't need to hold the ruler in my hand when I'm doing that so I'm just going to is a fifth one and I'm going to show you something and you can see so you see it's following the same the direction so wind the yarn around no chain wind the yarn around and I'm going to slip it through on the five so we have five left we have five remaining and we are working on so i'll be fast with this one because we still have uh, the next one to do Okay, and we have the last one.
because rem always remember that because you have because it's a stripe i will need to remove that last loop and leave it on the on the two loops before i finish up so i'm going to trim again and leave the last loop i'm not doing the last loop yet i'll get the 40 yarn because I'm, I'm using five different colors of yarn so i'm going to tie it to make the last loop and into the loop i try to make it twice so that it's firm and then we do the last one then we turn our work we do one chain and into each of this um, shell we are going to do into each dc in the shell we are going to do a dc because we need to make um, this last dc line we need to make it so that we can work on the loop but if you don't want to make the, this this um, double crochet line you just want to start a new loop over here you can do that remember you are the designer so you can but i like making it because it helps especially when you want to stitch them together when you want to stitch the front and the back together you will have you will have a place to sew and you don't want to really tamp out this one because if anything loses here it's going to make the it's going to affect the loop so that's why i like having this um, double crochet foundation between before i do the next loop and i like doing the loop on it so you can see that in each of them we have so we have 20 double crochet by the time we get to the end the good thing about this pattern is that you can use it for any design it can be a shirt can be um okay we've used it now for a gown it can be a blanket it can also be used for a skirt I'm thinking of using it for a gathered skirt. And into the last double crochet here we have that and remember because it's a stripe again we will need to you have to remember that <laughs> you will need to just do it onto two we'll trim and then you need although i didn't follow the sequence we used for the because um, this one is supposed to come in between both of um these gunmetal is supposed to come before these rules so after this um sand color we supposed to put the gunmetal and that's the sequence but i'm not following that sequence the sequence we use for the for the gown not following that i've already made a mistake so I'm going to put this gray here. So with the gray, we pull and then we start again. So I'm just going to do the gray so that you see that the pattern, that's how we follow the pattern up. So going to just, um, then you turn our work, we'll be 18. And then we start pulling the yarn
And we're continuing that and then you form it. So this is how So this is how we make our ruler lace. And the edges after we finish you're going to done the edges the edges you just need to weave them into the wear into the garment you need a thin crochet hook okay let me finish this one first then we'll do the edges So if we are doing the edges, I'm just going to leave this and just demonstrate the edges. You will need a thin crochet hook and then you need to, let me look for, okay, let me use this one and I'll do one on the loop. You need to think thin head crochet hook and you just need to weave in and out leave it down I think that should be so you just need to weave in and out of the knitwear and you take a strand or you can take both strands Windy, wind it yarn, the loose yarn around it, and then you darn it in. You pull it through. You can do it a little at a time so that it's not rough, or you can do it one. You can do both together. Because you have gone in and out. And if you have a very long, if the yeah, tail of yarn is very long or the loose yarn is very long, you can now trim it somewhere and it's going to stay properly. That's because you've um, gone in and out of um, the gamut that you are making. So now I can trim it there. We've taken care of that and let me just do this stuff. The cast the tail of yarn from cast on if you don't want to go this pa pattern you can also 
if it's, there are some certain stitches that you can hide it inside instead of going horizontally you can go vertically and hide the stitching like this one like this loop here if i want to because the the base is a different color so if i want to hide it here i can take this two i'm just going to come in wind the yarn around it and pull through okay there's just one then take the second one so into the base of the loop i'm going to pull the other one so it helps getting long tail of yarn to do that and if you notice why I just, as I pulled it, the other strand that was here, this other rose strand, just came up. So it's now part, like part of the design. And if you have, if you cannot decide to split, if you want to split them and weave it into, let's see if you will see this one clearly. This one is for those looking for perfection. So, okay, so, uh, sorry, let me do it again. I didn't know it was too close. So you put the hook, instead of horizontally, it's going to be vertically. You're going to now put it, because of the kind of pattern, you, you want to wind it in. You want to weave it into the double. So you see, we've, and now it's up here. Because it's in and out of pattern, you cannot trim it. And you have a nice. Why this other one? Because it's just a loop, we can take it into this other part. And then in and out again horizontally, because we've done it vertically, we'll do it here horizontally here to secure it. And then we can trim it's still so i'm going to just show you the so that you see you see this side is neat you don't have the strands here you don't have the strands here and i'm going to show you the other side and turn it and you're going to see that this other side is neat we don't have the strand here so that's how to done in your yarn for this kind of project you can you might have a better technique than this that is fine just do the one that is comforted that you are pleased with that you'll be proud of your gamut sometimes i do leave the yarn to add i just make sure that they are different uh, the same size or different sizes and just leave them and then later on thread some other extra yarn so that it gives a kind of rustic look you don't need to dance those yarn you don't need to do it you just add beautiful it just like extra strands onions and tassels but they are not tassels because you didn't you didn't make the they're like tassels yes but so just they are more strands than tassels because um they are not in lumps so they are just um extra like this you just tie them just because um you don't want to dan. Maybe you're you're tired of danning or so. So you can do that. Uh, this, I've done that in some of my projects. If you look at, if you take a look at some of my knit where you see them, you see um, those. This I think I did one recently, and I also did it in. Um, so I'll just put a clip at the end so that you see that you can leave it like that. That's also it's not completely most danny, and this is tiring for me. This is extra tiring. So you can just leave it like so on the knit wear. Don't worry, they will relax. You just leave it like that, but you just pretend they will look like a nice pattern. Some people do thread beads to weigh them down. You can leave it like that if you don't have beads, if you don't want beads in it. Remember, if you are going to machine wash it or so, you don't want the beads to get into the washing machine. So let's go and complete our knit wear.
So for our knit wear, we need 191 stitches to make 191 chain. That's because ruler lace is multiples of five stitches plus one. Normally we want we need 190, but plus one, the turning chain is going to make us 191. So let's start. So we finish both the front and the back. We can use either side as the front and the other side either, either side as the front or the back. So what we're going to do next is just to pin the side where the shoulder is going to be, where the neck is going to be, and where the shoulder is going to be. So I'm going to just hold the stripe and the plane together. And make sure it stretches the edges and then I just fold. Why I'm folding is because I want equal when I want to demarcate where I want the neck to be, I want the shoulder to the arm or to the elbow to be the same uh, length because we're going to pin them and we're going to stitch. So if this is going to be the neck, uh, the neck um the neck region. So we're going to pin from here. Just want to make sure. Okay, so we pin. We line. Just sorry, I'm just trying to line properly, and just pick to line. You can measure it if you want to, but it's necessary to measure it because so. So I'm just going to take this side to be the neck because I want it like a boot neck and this side is going to be the shoulder. Let me measure my shoulder to see, okay? Now I'm going to take a little from it so it's going to go. But remember, we want it on this um, double, let me use something else on my hand. We want it on this plate with a double crochet. We want, this to, we want it to start from there so that we have a fan stitch to secure or an anchor stitch for our design to secure the shoulders. So I'm just going to measure it on me and see if it's uh, cool. Okay, all right, that's cool. Don't forget the neck. You want um, you want your the your head. You want the wearer's head to be able to pass through without having to struggle. So I'm going to take it, the first mark I did. Taking that wearer's head into consideration, then we'll pin. I'm just going to secure the pin here so that I know this. Then I'll take a different color. I'm using um, color coded pins. So I'm going to insert mark tape. I'm not going to pin. And then we go to, you can use, uh, you can use your tapestry needle, which will give it a firm grip on, which will give a firm grip when stitching, or you can decide to use uh, the sewing machine. Okay. 
or for this one you can, for the shoulders you can use um, the the three needle and a yarn to give that secured edge then when you are sewing the other side because of the stitch design there which you can use the you can use your sewing machine for that because there are a lot of loops on this side and it might not give you you want that uh, you want your stitch secured so we have a very secure date and that is how going to the nice thing about this design is that um no side is really the in, the right side or the wrong side you can decide which side you want as the right side or the wrong side you can also decide which side you want as a front or the back as i said earlier my um, yarn wasn't enough so i had to make one side stripe and the other side so three three times 400 grams of iron yarn will be able to do it that's 1200 grams of iron yarn we give you this uh, design you see have leftover you will have leftover right. so uh, since i'm going to i'll be doing this off um, camera not to take too much of our time i'll just um how to do the sides sorry to uh, yes to do this side if you want to you can measure the body part so that it can it, you have um nice and dimension let me use a plain side so that the color don't interfere when i'm demonstrating so if you want to you can just place your tape measure let me just use this ruler since it's close to me uh place your tape measure and decide uh, and measure the body and you know which side you want to stitch to start from and the other stitch too you want your, the body from the neck the neck region you don't need to stitch that if you want it uh, tight if you want it fitting remember that but if you don't want it fitting wherever the neck starts from you can start doing your body shape from there So we, we've pinned the shoulders, we've pinned the shoulders, which we have here, and that's our neck region. So I'm going to sew th those off because it's really long so. Um, then I'll do... Then when you measure the body, you can decide, you know, which from, your, uh, from body measurement, you can decide which side, you, which... Um, so we have already finished sewing the neck band and if you see the zit there's the right side and this is the wrong side out we have a very thin thin line here and um, this is the neck you can see the neck the opening of the neck and we have the other side for the shoulder that's the shoulder so two side the shoulders for both sides let me turn it to a place so that we can. I think we uh, zoom out a little so that we can see if we can see it properly. All right. So we have the shoulders here, and we've sewn it. This is the neck opening. We have the neck opening and uh, the shoulders sewn. This is the right side, this is the wrong side, where the seam is. Now it's time for us to sew vertically down so that we can make the armhole and also um, to the hem of the garment. We are not going to sew at this edge here. You, you, if you want to, you can just sew the, you can just make an armhole and sew it here. But the effect we're trying to make is to have a butterfly kind of effect here. We have a light, light, light opening here. So if you want that, if you want that, but if you don't want that, you can just sew. You can just uh, measure for the arm and then sew. Then you sew down. You just measure pin, but we are not doing that. So. Um, I've already done one side so that I'll demonstrate it. 
and then we'll pin the other side okay so this is the arm so this is the arm and uh, we st we stitched it we stitched down here So we moved about one, two, three, four in, and then we stitched. That's because when we measured for the body, we have enough space out. So any um, one you want to do, you can. So I'm just going to measure for the arm now. Working on the right side, because this has to be the right side. If you do that on the wrong side, if you turn it over, since I've done it on one part, let me just, uh, if you turn it over, and you do it on the wrong side when you bring it out on the right side it will not be like so the design will be um, pronounced and you have a thick layer in there because we have that butterfly effect we have this butterfly effect hiding here so it's going to make your knitwear lumpy we don't want that we want that butterfly effect out that's why we're working on the right side of the knitwear so I'll turn out of the stripe side so that you can see the effect of the design um, so that you can see what we are trying to demonstrate without uh, the stripe causing a distraction. So that is it. You can see the effect is the arm. Uh, you can see the effect on it. I'm just trying to, for those that... Uh, when you demonstrate with multicolors, there are some of us when we demonstrate with multicolors, it's difficult for us to see. So we need a little plain design on the side to make us understand what you are trying to explain. So that's why I'm repeating myself. Okay, so that is it. We stitched four designs in. Four designs in, so we can you can see our stitch mark. But remember to leave from the shoulder to the arm for the opening of the suit. You can see that my hands can slip in and come out of the neck. So you need to leave that opening. We are going to do the same on this side. Since I've sewn that side, I'm going to do this side. I'm pinning, then going to, we'll go to the sewing machine and we'll stitch this one up. So first I'm going to take is uh, four stitches in. So we have one, two, three, four, which, um, and make sure your design, because the equal design on the front and on the back, you have to make sure your design lines pro line properly. And, um, okay, so uh, we have one loop, two loop, three loop, four loop. And then we have our, then on this uh, DC row, that's when we have, this is, I'm going to make it, put it on line because from my arm to, from my shoulder to where I want my arm hole to start is nine inches. So I'm just going to pin that. I'm going to use um, white so that we see white pin and I'm just going to pin it. So continue pinning. Or well, I can use different color coded so that you see that. Let me use yellow next and we'll pin it straight. And taking a look is going to be I will turn the other side let me just work on a little downward of this and we just pin straight down the pins don't need to be close to each other remember if you don't pin if you make it you might make a mistake of if you don't mark where your arm the arm is going to be you make a mistake of stitching over to the um to the neck and you have your arm you have the opening for the arm the arm will opening so you want you need that or the sleeve opening so i'm just going to pin and we'll pin those ones down just a little pin to the space thing to make sure we are on the right uh, right row when we are stitching and then this last one I'm just going to pin the 
him to make sure it's the same. Then I'm going to turn it to the other side, to this side so that we see you see it. Okay. To the um, stripe side. You can pin it anywhere. It's just because to make it clearer. So if I try opening it, you will see that I've pinned it and we have this butterfly effect here. So that's what we want. Okay, so we're going to sew from the you sew from the front. As I said earlier, if you don't sew from the front, it's going to you're not going to have that butterfly effect, and you're going to have lumped in your work. So you have to sew from the front. But the shoulders are being you see this it seems for the shoulders are inside because the seams comes out for the shoulders, but for the um for the side seams, the same is uh, the same you have to make it in front or um, that the right side of the gamut. Okay, not uh, just front, so the right side of the gamut as the uh, right hand knowledge to use or tends to use. Okay, so there's the right side of the gamut, there's the right side of the gamut, there's, these are the wrong side of the gamut where we have the um, seam for the shoulder, but I'm just trying to correct myself. <laughs> I've been saying it. The front, the front. Okay. So we have our pins here. So we're going to sew on this gray 3D, um, this uh, this gray line here, where we have the gray line, where we have the double crochet stitches on the row without, um, that, without any design effect. They are just a cr double crochet um, stitch that so that's it this one here and we have our nine set nine inch um yes we have a nine inch for our armhole and we'll go to the sewing machine and then we'll start sewing and after that sewing on the sewing machine I'm going to wear it and we'll see how we can use it with belts or we can use it without belts and you can put lining over it. I'll be using um, silk tie under lining under it. You can wear, um, before I go there, let me just explain this one. You can wear leggings, you can make a, a gown lining, you can use um, leggings or a tema wear under it also if you want to. You can. Whatever lining you desire. You can use cotton, you can use silk, you can use uh, whatever lining you desire to use under it. And I'll show you. You can use it with belt, you can use it without belt. We can use it with normal belt, or you can just crochet eye cord and just um, tie in between and use it as a drawstring if you want to. You can do whatever you desire. You should, it's your nature, it's your design. So let's go and then we'll wait. Let's go and sew now. See you at the sewing machine. So here on the machine, we are using simple backstitch and we've set our needle. We are using a jeans needle to sew. 